Thank you, Debbie. Um, small digression. Uh, it, it is a bit uh, getting used to when uh, this room is actually set up the way it usually is for teaching as, as a uh, instructor, if you're used to standing in front of the room and talking to uh, the group, when you don't have a front of the room uh, to stand in and you have to move around, uh, it is a, a bit of a different uh, experience, although uh, it seems to work quite well and uh, students seem to like it. So with that, in just uh, uh, the next uh, very few minutes, I want to give you a preview of where we're going to go uh, over the next uh, two days. Uh, I would start uh, by acknowledging that uh, I have a long-standing interest in uh, fires. Uh, <clears throat> this is from a much younger life when I spent a few years actually working as a firefighter uh, to pay for college uh, and actually had the opportunity to partic uh, participate in a number of wildfire uh, suppression activities. Uh, I don't know what that says about uh, my deep psychological state, but we, we won't go there. Um, so what uh, we're, we're going to do uh, is spend two days uh, covering uh, population and environmental health effects of uh, the wildfires and some of what that means for preparedness uh, and recovery efforts uh, today. We're going to spend largely talking about uh, what the effects are uh, and spending the biggest bulk of time on the, uh, the human uh, health effects. Now, we, one of the underlying premises of this workshop is that the, the nature of the wildfires that we have seen in the last few years is really the new normal. Uh, and both in the, the frequency uh, and the, the number of different locations and the intensity uh, of the fires. <clears throat> and what we have seen is going to be repeated uh, in the future, in this year and in subsequent years. And there are a lot of communities that are in substantial risk uh, of uh, what we have seen happen with some other communities. And so part of what we hope to, or where we hope to end up perhaps tomorrow is some of the things that we might start doing to better prepare those communities because what we have seen in the past a few years is going to be what we see going forward. It may vary some from year to year, but uh, this is, as I already said, the, the new normal. So we're gonna start with a, a session uh, talking about that uh, and focusing a bit on uh, some of the environmental uh, and climatic circumstances that uh, have created uh, this new normal and some of what we might expect going forward. We're then gonna talk about uh, some of the populations that are impacted by the wildfires, again, focusing especially on vulnerable populations and some that uh, are not uh, ordinarily uh, heard about in these types of, of forums. We'll then have a relatively short session uh, on the effects of the wildfires on the, the natural environment. Uh, and that is going to be uh, a little bit of an experiment because our speaker is uh, joining us uh, remotely. Um, but we, we're hopeful and, and uh, uh, that this will work out fine. Then we're gonna spend a big chunk of time uh, in two different sessions on the human uh, health effects uh, and again, part of the challenge here was that there are just a lot of, of effects uh, of these wildfires. And so we have, by design, somewhat limited the conversation. Those two sessions are going to be a little different than the others. In the all the other sessions, we will have uh, questions and answers and some discussion following the panel uh, speakers. For the human health effects, we're going to hold that uh, until the end because there's so much overlap. Uh, between the, the different presenters that we thought it would be more constructive to have uh, the, the question and answer and, and discussion uh, following all uh, seven or so of the uh, presenters. Uh, and then we will end the day with a, a relatively short session on the, uh, some of the challenges uh, of doing investigations and research uh, into the wildfires. And there is an abundance of, of those challenges as we will hear about. I wanted to also uh, note that uh, we um, will be airing at lunchtime 
uh, a documentary that has been produced by the UC Davis Environmental Health Sciences Center uh, called uh, Waking Up to Wildfires. It is not obligatory if people want to do something else during the lunch hour, uh, although I think you will find it uh, quite gripping and would encourage you to uh, see it. We will also be showing snippets, uh, uh, some parts of that, uh, and different sessions or as at the beginning of some of the other sessions uh, as well. I believe uh, that this is the first time uh, that this documentary has been aired to a national audience. Uh, it has been uh, piloted, if you will, or, or uh, viewed at some local settings, but I believe this is the first time it's actually been seen uh, by a national audience. And again, I would uh, encourage you to um, stay tuned. There, as I'll mention later in the last, there will be box lunches and, and it will be relatively easy if you want to grab a lunch and come back in and, and watch the, uh, the film. Uh, on uh, day uh, two, uh, tomorrow, uh, we're going to talk more about uh, recovery uh, and how we might enhance the operational uh, response uh, and some of the uh, impacts on mitigation uh, and preparedness, and then end up the day with some reflections from the different session leaders, um, and then we will close it out roughly uh, three or four o'clock. Uh, and uh, you can ignore the Roman numerals on this slide. We actually do know how to use Roman numerals, even though it may not be reflected on the, the slide. Um, and with that, let me uh, just end up with some the more mundane uh, logistical things. Um, I would ask that everyone turn their cell phones uh, either off or to uh, non-auditory mode. Uh, so as it, we're recording, and um, it would be preferable not to have cell phones ringing uh, during the recording. Uh, as well as uh, not interrupting uh, the speakers. Um, the uh, restrooms uh, and facilities are down the hallway. Uh, lunch will be provided, uh, the box lunch. And then at the end of today, uh, and this is primarily to the uh, speakers and the moderators, we will have a, a debrief uh, and a quick quality improvement uh, session at 5 o'clock or whenever we end over on the breezeway in the education building on the third deck, or third floor. Um, and the rest of you can go have a drink or whatever you do at, uh, after a day like this. Um, are there any quick questions about logistics or anything before we launch into the first session? Seeing none, uh, I would uh, invite, um, should we take a, a two minute stretch break or we, do you want to just jump right into the, the session? Jump right in, okay. Thank you, uh, David and, and Debbie, uh, for being here. So, uh, I would invite uh, Dr. Uh, Holton, um, and uh, Leon Jolin and, and Dr. Barker up to the uh, table. Um, and I would also offer you the uh, opportunity because the slides are situated the way they are at the moment. If you want to use the hand mics and walk around uh, or, you know, and so you can see the screen as you're talking, uh, that's an option or you can just come up to the podium uh, and talk as I uh, am doing. I'm not going to give a, a detailed bio of everybody. Uh, I presume everyone has picked up their best-selling uh, program here. This is a true collector's item. If you have not already gotten one, I would encourage you to do it. They have already sold out on Amazon, uh, but um, uh, they are out there. In there you will find uh, the more detailed bios of all of our uh, speakers. But I would like to uh, invite to the uh, podium first uh, Dr. Benjamin Holton, who is a professor and chancellor's fellow, uh, Department of Land, Air, and Water Resources, uh, and director of the UC Davis uh, John Muir uh, Institute uh, for the Environment. 
And I think you will find uh, this presentation uh, quite engaging, if not gripping. So, Ben? <laughs> 